Alice Esther here from I Dig Dead People with another family history story. It has been so long since I've put out a new video and I am so sorry. We've been crazy busy around here and I finally have a chance to do another video and this one is so good. So you're going to not want to miss it. Definitely stay tuned in. So I do have my client's permission to bring this story to you. I was quite surprised by the turn event events in this otherwise normal family history. So I was researching uh, my client's grandmother, Lawrence Witten's family, and her parents were Lewis Witten and Lottie Green. And they were married September 26, 1901 in Maine. And I have a marriage record here for them. They were a young couple. The groom uh, was about 20 years old and the bride was about 17 years of age. Uh, they lived near each other with the groom's residence in Dover and the bride's residence not far away in Dexter, Maine. Lewis, the groom, was a spinner in a woolen mill and Lottie was a domestic, which was a household servant of the time. So what's great about marriage records is that when they're completely filled out, you get the names of the parents, providing you with another generation to research. I love that. So Lewis's parents uh, were Harry Witten and Hattie Livermore, according to his marriage record, and they were both born in Maine. Harry was a broom maker and Hattie was a housekeeper. Because the record doesn't say housewife as an occupation, like um, Lottie's mother's does, Hattie was probably a housekeeper in someone else's home. So it's unlikely that she was a live-in housekeeper as she had a family of her own. Um, housekeepers of the time period were supposed to be morally upright women. Um, they oversaw the other female domestic servants in the household. In the hierarchy of domestic servants, the housekeeper was at the top. So this job would have required long hours uh, with serving the family that was employing her, and the pay would not have been as good as other jobs like factory work. With Lewis's wife Lottie being a domestic, it was possible she worked in the same household as Lewis's mother Hattie, and maybe that's how they met. So Lottie's parents were Howard Green and Mary Thompson. Unfortunately, by the time of Lewis and Lottie's marriage, Lottie's parents had already deceased. Uh, we don't know at what age Lottie became an orphan, but at least by the time of her marriage, she was without her parents. Based on where he lived, Lewis probably worked at the Mayo and Son Woolen Mill, and that was later called the American Woolen Mill, located in Dover, Foxcroft, Maine. As a spinner, he would have been turning wool into yarn with the use of machinery. Several buildings made up the uh, Mayo and Son Woolen Mill complex, and that whole area that those buildings are now part of the National Historic Register, the earliest building being built in 1844. In 1953, the woolen mill was shut down and the property was bought by uh, another company. It was like a wood company. And that company went out of business in 2007. And the complex remained abandoned until about 2015 when it was renovated into apartments and businesses. And uh, we have a picture of that here, which is just really cool. I love that. Uh, in 1901, when Lewis worked here, this mill would have been just bustling with activity. It would just have been a very busy, prosperous place. So a little bit of history on the state of Maine. It was originally part of Massachusetts until March 15, 1820, when the Missouri Compromise was passed by Congress. During this time period, um, the tensions between the North, and which had abolished slavery, by that time in the South where slavery was continuing to grow, those tensions between North and South were starting to, to show. Um, this Missouri Compromise, which involved the state of Maine, it allowed Maine to enter the Union as a free state, which was a non-slave state at the time, and then an, a slave state would enter at the same time, and this would maintain the balance of representation in Congress between the slave and the free states. Um, of course, we know this compromise didn't last long, and as more lands were added into the United States, um, and states had to make a decision between being free, a free state, or a slave state, um, there were divisions in politics over that, and it came to a head in 1861 with the outbreak of the Civil War. So while Maine had been colonized and inhabited since the beginning of our country, it didn't become a separate state until much later, only uh, 80 years before the marriage of uh, Lewis Whitten and Lottie Green. So as I continued to research this family, I turned to the parents of Lewis Whitten, who were found in his marriage record, um, like we discussed, Harry Whitten and Hattie Livermore. 
I was able to find Lewis with his parents in the last census before his marriage, which was the 1900 census, and we have a copy of that here too. Lewis is 17 years old, and he's working as a teamster in Bradley, Maine. Teamsters were men who handled um, a team of horses and wagon that delivered merchandise throughout the region. At the time that Lewis was a teamster, this occupation was just be beginning to become unionized. Um, teamsters were like the truck di drivers of their day. So they worked long hours, they were hauling uh, loads many miles with little pay. They were responsible for their load and what happened to it, even though they didn't own that load. Um, knowing that Lewis worked for the woolen mill at the time of his marriage, a year later, he was probably employed by that same woolen mill as a teamster at the time of his marriage. So by the time of his marriage, a year later, he's moved up from being a teamster to being employed as a spinner in the mill. Lewis's father, Harry Witten, shows up in the 1900 census, which was enumerated on June 7, 1900 in Bradley Town. But he passes away six months later on January 24, 1901 in Dover, Maine. So we know that Lewis is living in Dover by the time he marries eight months later in September because his marriage record lists Dover, Maine as his residence. Since his father dies in Dover, the family at some point moved from Bradley Town in 1900 to Dover, which really isn't a long distance at all. So Lewis is most likely still living with his widowed mother and siblings at the time of his marriage. Other people living with the family in the 1900 census are Lewis's siblings. He has three brothers and two younger sisters. His father, Harry, was still listed as a broommaker. Um, broommakers were considered skilled labor at the time, um, which would have provided more pay for the family. During this time period, uh, the early 1900s, brooms were in being increasingly made in larger factories, but they still required a skilled laborer to make them. Um, with the invention of the electric vacuum cleaner in 1908 by Hoover, there would be a drastic decline in the number of brooms manufactured in the U.S. But that would have been after um, Harry passed in 1901. So about this time in my research, I began looking for photos or drawings of Dover, Maine to include with my report to the client. Um, I often find that or I often try to find those pictures of towns because it gives people an idea of where their um, ancestors lived, how things looked at the time. And I've been able to find some of these photos of early towns in historical societies. So um, often online too. So if you search a historical society, you can probably find in the town that you're looking for, you can probably find some early uh, photos. Such was the case with my research on Dover, Maine. I went to the Historical Society's website and I began looking through the online pictures they had for the town. That's when I came across a drawing of a woman and her two daughters with a caption showing the names of Hattie Livermore and her daughters Jenny and Fanny. And this is the picture that I saw. I immediately realized that this was a drawing of Lewis Witten's mother and two sisters. In researching women, I rarely find um, evidence of them in the public records besides their marriage, uh, sometimes their death. If you find a female ancestor in the public record before the 1930s, and it's not one of those, you know, death, marriage, or even not birth, then they were famous for something and it usually wasn't good. So needless to say, I was intrigued because there was a mention of murder somewhere in the caption with the drawing. And I was like, murder? What's up with that? So to the local newspaper archives I went, looking for the full story. And I found it. So the story is quite disturbing. It showed up in newspapers across the country in 1902, and I have one of the newspaper clippings here. So here we go. I'm going to give you some details from this newspaper article. After the death of Harry Witten in September 1901, Lewis Witten married in September of the same year. A year later, one of Lewis's younger sisters, Jenny, who was about 11 years old, died. This was in September 1902. By November 24th of 1902, just a couple months later, the youngest sister, Fanny, was also dead. It was the death of this second sister that had authorities looking into both deaths. As the newspaper article states, it was determined that their mother, Hattie Livermore Witten, had purchased arsenic and strychnine and poisoned first Jenny and then Fanny. 
In reviewing the newspaper article, I was able to confirm that I had the right Hattie Livermore and her daughters because the article mentioned that after Hattie's arrest, she was allowed to stay the night with her son, Lewis Witten, in his home in Dexter, Maine. And that's the same town that Hattie and her daughters had recently moved to after her husband's death. So this was the same Lewis Witten. Um, we had the right people. So just before weeks before the death of his second sister, Fanny, Lewis's own daughter, Florence, was born. So how disturbing for Lewis and his wife, Lottie, to have just had a child, buried two sisters, and possibly have a murderous mother spending the night. Yeah, probably didn't sleep well. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end there. Uh, Lewis's mother, Hattie, was taken to the sheriff's home for incarceration on November 30th, 1902, probably to await trial on the murder of her daughters. I mean, it's a small town. They may not have had a jail, or because she was a woman, they may have felt that um, it would be easier for her to stay in a home, like in house arrest. Unfortunately, when she was taken to the sheriff's home that same day on November 30th, uh, 1902, she took her own life by hanging uh, when she was left alone for a few minutes in the room she was given. The article goes on to state that the local druggist testified to having provided Hattie with the poisons, um, the use of which he was told was to get rid of rats. Before Hattie's arrest, an autopsy was performed on both the daughters with the older daughter having to be exhumed. She'd already been buried for a couple months. Both daughters were found to have arsenic and strychnine in their bodies. At this point, the death of Hattie's husband, Harry, the year before, was now also suspect. In reviewing his death record, Harry's cause of death was vomiting cause unknown. And we have a copy here. That leads me to believe that Harry was probably also a victim of poisoning by Hattie. However, with the death of Hattie, the investigation was concluded. Um, the likely motive in the murders, according to the investigators, the $50 and $85 insurance policies that Hattie had on her daughters. Um, for us, that seems like a really small sum for our time, but in that time period, it would, so right now it'd be about $3,600 in our time period. Um, in 19, I mean, in 1902, it would have been about $3,600. That's not a small, I mean, that's not a small chunk of change in 1902. That's a pretty good amount of money. Um, the average worker in 1902 made about $400 a year. So $3,600 would have provided for almost a decade for Hattie. So Hattie was not buried with her husband, Harry Witten, in Evergreen Cemetery in Milo, Maine but she was buried in Evergreen Cemetery with her daughters, the ones that she murdered. Um, they're all buried together under a headstone with Hattie's maiden name of Livermore, and we have a picture here. Eventually, Lewis Witten and his wife Lottie would have a son and later divorced by 1922. And one has to wonder like, how much this event in the early years of their marriage affected their relationship. Um, my client knew Lottie as his great grandmother as a child, and yet had heard nothing about this event in the family's history. Now, of course, how many people would repeat a story like this and have it known to later generations? So you never know where your digging might lead. Unfortunately, in this case, it led to a story of murder and suicide in a small town in Maine. Um, at the time, it was probably it was, would have been a devastating event for the family. Now, several gener generations removed, it's kind of this fantastic story here and um, like, wow, I didn't know this happened in the family and it just was a interesting one to investigate. So if you enjoyed this episode of I Dig Dead People, make sure to click like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click the bell so that you get notifications of our next episode. Thank you for watching. This is Anna Sester with I Dig Dead People. Thank mm -hmm. you.